the Lord put on my heart to really start a series on the whole armor of God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this wonderful morning, Lord. How you have given us all the equipment and the tools to fight the enemy. And Lord, not only that, you yourself are a man of war. And we just join you in that battle, Lord. You don't leave us alone, but we are in the army of God to fight this battle. We thank you and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So a quick story even from the conference. You know, we were at the site at 8.45 in the morning and Simon is already chuckling. We had a lot of challenges, but how the Lord came through, I just want to share a quick story. At 8.45 in the morning, I listened to the audio for the live broadcast, and there was only noise on it. This was at the conference, 15 minutes to start the conference. Really, it was, um, it was a tough one for me because we had made commitments to some uh, large media networks for a global broadcast, three of them. And it's in your integrity is everything. Your word is everything. And then, uh, of course, intercessors were praying at um, the uh, pre-conference prayer. And we, had, we were praying in the... Uh, people were wondering, what, this, what, they, what are they doing? It's a prayer conference, but why are they so desperately crying out to the Lord before the conference? And then Pastor Jemima came to the media table and really fought a spiritual warfare. This was 8.45. And we were ready by 9.20. I think we were ready by 9.20. Uh, but kudos to the team. I think we kept, the team kept their cool. I don't know if I was cool. <laughs> Let's give a hand to the Lord. He will never let the righteous down. He will never let the righteous down. You know, sometimes we do panic. I mean, it's, it's natural when you face an adversity, there is a moment of panic. And it's okay, it's human. But then we should re recover from that and respond with the appropriate spiritual warfare. You know, and if you really think about it, even in our nation right now, and I was thinking about spiritual warfare in general, in our families, in our individual lives, in our nation. Even in the last few years, Raj, if you find, if you think about it, the enemy has now opened up and he's freely fighting. You can really clearly see. Ten years back, maybe the spiritual warfare we, we, of course, learn and we, we don't see it so open out in the world. I mean, think about COVID impacting 200 nations. You know, the enemy is openly fighting and the church should also have an attitude of openly battling. And I see that missing. You know, we, we see, I'm glad there are many of us who are intercessors here, you know, but in a broad paintbrush, the church is really asleep in America. And we need to really wake them up and teach the church that there is a battle going on, which is open. We see it. We see it everywhere in the nations and the church must respond. And that's why we gathered and prayed. But the church must respond. The battle is out there in the open. The showdown is there. The good news is we have the tools and the word and the armor, the whole armor that the Lord has given us to be able to fight this battle. You know, are you excited? Let's give a hand to the Lord. You know, we are able to win because many are fearful at this time. Many in the church are fearful and are covering and taking a step back instead of moving forward and saying, the Lord is a man of war and I'm joining in the armies of God. You know, we need to, David said that even when he was fighting Goliath, you know, 
that we are in the armies of God and who is this uncircumcised Philistine who is fighting, fighting the armies of God. He understood that we are warriors. He understood that we are soldiers and we need to think about it because typically we lead our lives and we are not thinking about ourselves as warriors in the kingdom. Vicky, we need to. We need to understand there is a battle going on in the open and we need to fight this battle. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. We do not wrestle against people, you know. Sometimes we are fighting against our own spouses. That's a different thing. Our spouse is not the enemy. You know, we need to discern. The Lord will give us the discernment as as we, as we walk more with the Lord, you know, I, the Lord is reminding me a story once, um, myself and another brother, you know, we got a phone call from this um, person who said who needed help. So we entered the home and we could sense the darkness. We could feel the darkness there. And uh, we had fasted because we knew there was something going on. And we could see the enemy manifesting right there. We were there for three hours praying a prayer of deliverance. And the Lord was continuing to give the kind of evil spirits that we need to cast out. It was a powerful time. I've never really had that experience after that. But for three hours, we were casting out different spirits. There were thousands of spirits that were being cast out for three hours. But the Lord has given us the authority to trample over serpents and scorpions. And we need to realize that, that we have been given that authority when the enemy comes against our families. Maybe it is through the children, maybe. He's connecting with the children and social media we see so much going on right now. And also with the Z generation, we see the LGBTQ agenda. And yesterday we were talking about somebody in the church who is having identity issues. I mean, this is really sad what is going on. And so much prayer is needed for the Z generation. We had an amazing time of prayer for Z gen and redigging. Uh, you know, the Lord really brought in like 30 or 40 Z generation youth and they cried out to the Lord with a great burden. And it was a very powerful time, you know, and we must fight back. You know, we cannot cover and see the challenges. We see so many challenges even with regulation and mandates and I don't want to go into the details of that, but we need to understand what is happening so that we can respond to what is happening there. You know, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. See, this battle is not a physical battle. We are fighting the spiritual forces of darkness, the principalities, the powers, the spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. That's what we are fighting against. And we need to realize that even our weapons are not carnal but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. You know, so the battle is in the heavenlies, but we have the authority to cast out the enemy, the prince of the air. If you are praying for the nations, we can cast out the prince of the air over America. But if you are praying for your family, you can cast out the enemy and God will give us the discernment. Is it a spirit of fear? Is it a spirit of depression? You know, so many phone calls from youth that are going through so much. It's, it's just unreal how the enemy is fighting and we must fight back and we must become a mouthpiece for others to fight this battle on our knees. Casting down arguments and everything that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. And sometimes the enemy will come and target your mind. Not sometimes. I think it is common. But we need to take that thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. You know, you can rebuke that thought in Jesus' mighty name. You can rebuke that temptation in Jesus' mighty name. We can resist the enemy and he will flee. 
it is we we need to be equipped to do this battle for our families and as fathers i think we are more responsible of course mothers too but fathers become the gatekeepers for the home and the responsibility is with us so we need to be watching we need to be discerning we need to become the watchmen for our home like we are watchmen for our nation you know we need to be on the walls in the old olden days they will be the watchmen will be actually on the walls just watching what is the strategy of the enemy where are they approaching from we need to understand and discern that these are the enemies targeting our nation and the nations of the world and we see you know we see clearly the church really missed it in the last 45 years there has been a a moral decay that was started one by one and it was planned it was planned and the church is just starting to wake up as to what happened you know it was planned systematically and we we definitely some of us probably discerned maybe 20 years back but not 45 years back so the damage was done but the point is we can still fight back and win we can gain ground against the enemy we were at bonnie bray house on friday morning the lord is reminding me to share that and i was so exhausted but that morning isaac was a powerful morning we went to bonnie bray house that's where the azusa revival started the presence of the lord was amazing there and there was a group of us maybe or six or seven of us we were just praying and the presence of the lord came in abundance we just felt a mighty move of god right there and we were we were battling to redig that well of revival at azusa street and as you know it is a battle because the philistines had stopped them up genesis 26 and 18 says you know the wells were blocked isaac redug the wells that were dug during the days of his father abraham and the philistines had blocked them up so we were really praying a prayer of repentance praying a spiritual warfare prayer to really remove remove that filth that the philistines had put and we felt a amazing release there and as we walked out this man of god who was with us he said you know this bonnie bray house is the head stream and we have opened it up i i i saw a vision of the stream water flowing and gushing and then next day when we were at azusa street the lord put on my heart you know this is the river because head stream means the source of a river and we actually saw the lord move in a mighty way the next day i felt that was the breakthrough moment to fight on our knees it's so important i think the spiritual warfare prayer we cannot ignore it's no longer time for just simple prayers we must even in our family prayers have an attitude of warfare and that's how we have to live because the days are different it's 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 challenging days we live in and we need to recognize that and respond to it without that we cannot win the battle we need the spiritual warfare prayers and and even the conference the execution of the conference was done because of the warfare prayers without a doubt and then ephesians 6 and 10 says finally my brethren be strong in the lord and in the power of his might one of my favorite verses which i really declare almost in every prayer be strong in the lord you know paul is writing this letter from prison think about it i don't know what i will write if i was in prison honestly we need to grow we need to grow in the lord and really have that have that warrior mentality paul had that warrior mindset now he didn't feel bad for himself he was saying i'm going to whether i'm in prison or not i'm going to train people i'm going to write to people i'm going to encourage people i'm going to teach them a few principles so that they can live their lives and he is he is just totally sacrificing his life to bless others as an apostle you know be strong in the lord couple of things i want to share today first is 
Stay with me. Be strong in the Lord. Strong. I know it sounds so simple. But we need to implement it. Let's say it one more time. Be strong in the Lord. In this season, I'm telling you, the, the times that we live in, it's so critical because the enemy can easily get you in the defensive. Easily. That's why we need to be strong in the Lord. You know, in the, the strength of an army general lies in his troops. Think about it. You know, they say, hey, the uh, U.S. has so many people in the army, you know, and China has so many. The strength of the army general lies in his troops and the equipment and the weapons. But in the army of saints, the strength of the whole host lies in the Lord of hosts. You know, we are in the army of God, but our strength lies in the Lord. And that is, and that is our that is our strength and hope that our strength doesn't come from ourselves, but in the Lord. He is a God who is a mighty God. He is a God who created the heavens and the earth and our strength lies in him. Uh, the approach is totally different here in the world. You know, he, will, he is with us. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He is right with us. He is walking with us. He knows exactly what you are going through. He knows exactly what's going on in your family. He knows exactly what you're going to say when you're going to pray. He is a personal God. He is a personal God to all of us. You know, in Deuteronomy 20, 3 and 4. And he shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, Today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. Do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid and do not tremble or be terrified because of them. You know, I feel it's a prophetic word. Today you are on the verge of battle with your enemies. You know, it is there. The battle is going on in the heavenlies. The battle is going on for your families. The battle is going on for our communities. The battle is going on for our state right now. I mean, there is so much going on. Our state and our nation. There is a battle going on for our nation right now. And we better realize it and we respond because otherwise we lose our freedoms. It's, we are already losing many freedoms. So it, it is critical. It is critical. Do not tremble or be terrified. Because many are trembling and terrified right now. Saying we are losing our freedoms. That's, it's not the time to cover. It's the time to move forward and say what can I do to help. And not many are saying that. What can I do to help? It should be our response. Because our families can be impacted eventually. If we don't act. Of course if we act. God is going to take care of us. God is going to take care of us. But we must act. We cannot not act. If I can say that. Do not let your heart faint. Do not be afraid. Do not tremble or be terrified because of them. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. See the thing is. God is going to do the battle. We need to join the army of God. We need to have the men's mindset of a warrior and he will do the battle for you. The word of God says the Lord is a man of war and the Lord is his name. He is a man of war. He can fight the battle and defeat the enemy. He has already defeated the enemy. In Exodus 15 and 6 it says, Your right hand, O Lord, has become glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, has dashed the enemy to pieces. That's what we need. You know, the enemy is raising his ugly head in all the seven mountains. And I don't have time to go through all the seven mountains. And, but family is one of the mountains. And that's where we see a big battle going on. Suicides are up. Depression is up. Drug addictions are up. Schools have restarted. But there are so many challenges that the youth are going through. 
you know, the COVID deaths are sparse as connected as related to suicides. And, and it, it's, it's a, there is a lot of chaos in the Z generation and we, we must be weeping between the porch and the altar. That's where we are now. It's no longer a simple prayer. And sorry, it's not a very happy message today, but we have to talk reality, John. We cannot, we cannot ignore what is going on around us, Daniel. We, we have to fight back. A nation is at stake. Our families are at stake. You know, in Ephesians 3 and 16, it says that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with might through his spirit in the inner man. We need, this is the time we need the Holy Spirit anointing. We need the power of God in our lives. We need the Holy Spirit to strengthen our inner man so that he is living in us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. But we need that anointing, that kapranator anointing to be strengthened in the Lord so that we can actually fight this battle. And in John 15 and 5, it says, I am the wine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit, for without me you can do nothing. You know, the concept of abiding is to remain as one. So this is the time to to really seek the Lord with all our heart, to love the Lord with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength, to have that time of prayer that Pastor Jemima talked about so that we can be one, we can read the word, we can be meditating on the word, understand the word, and be connected to the true wine. We are the branches. But if you are not connected to the true wine, if you are not connected to the Lord that is a man of war, how will we be fighting that battle? You know, I remember even Caleb and Joshua. We talked about Caleb a couple of Sundays back in Joshua 14 and 11. He's saying even physically he's strong, as strong as he was at 40 when he was 85 years old. You know, so this strength, of course, for spiritual warfare, but the Lord can give us strength, physical strength, because we need to do a lot of things. Right now, there's a lot of lawsuits flying I know some people watching might not uh, appreciate me, but the point is we must fight back on some of the mandates and it is happening, but the more needs to happen to protect our nation. Number two, be strong in the power of his might. Say with me, be strong in the power of his might. I like Ephesians 1.19. It's one of my favorite verses. Let's read Ephesians 1.19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? See, as believers, we miss this. There is an exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. But every day when we are leading our lives, we are not thinking about this exceeding greatness of his power that is directed toward you. Directed toward you. Directed toward you. You know, God, the resurrection power is directed toward you and your family. What an amazing resurrection power. We have access to the resurrection power to change things. Maybe some of you watching online are saying, well, I have a prodigal son and he has not come back. Or a daughter. Keep hanging on. There is exceeding greatness of his resurrection power that is pointed toward you. And that resurrection power will resurrect the situation in your life. Never give up. Sometimes it might take years, but easily man will cover. Easily man will give up. Easily we can give up. But we need to understand Ephesians 1.19, the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. Are you, are you a believer? Let's raise your hand. Then there is an exceeding greatness of his resurrection power available to you and your family. You know, we, we don't think about it that way. And that's why the church is afraid today. The church is afraid today. 
and it shouldn't be the case the remnant us right here and and there is many other groups that are a remnant in the nation and that's why there is great hope for america and our families you know of course we say i want to make sure my family is okay and our church family is okay but we need to realize this exceeding greatness of his power is available to you you know in scripture many people doubted and we we know about abraham and even moses doubted in numbers 11 you know he had seen an amazing miracle of parting of the red sea and but still he doubted you know sometimes we forget what god has done in our lives and that's why we should write it down you know write down the rema word every day especially for the younger people i'm challenging write down what god is speaking to you every day it will help you it will guide your steps write down what god has answered in terms of your prayer write it down because it is very easy to forget you know our tendency is okay the next one okay i need this now lord but did you thank the lord for the answered prayers before numbers 11 21 to 23 and moses said the people whom i am among are 600000 men on foot yet you have said i'll give them meat that they may eat for a whole month shall flocks and herds be slaughtered for them to provide enough for them or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to provide enough for them see the lack of faith there i think i don't know if we are better than moses but just want to point out i'm sure he's going to question me <laughs> you were how about you you know <laughs> not not to i think we all could be in that position we just saw a miracle yesterday and today we are questioning god and then martha and mary regarding lazarus we probably don't have a lot of time to go through that but they also doubted it's been 4 days there is a stench now lord if you are here you would have been okay you know they doubted the question is do we doubt as well do we doubt as well you know faith is in our spirit man that is the good news okay even for those who have a moment of doubt simon if our faith is strong if we have been feeding on the word we can overcome that doubt because the faith is in the spirit man the doubt is in our soul in our mind in our mind the faith can overcome because the faith is in the spirit man that's why we need to continue to feed on the word because the word of god as we listen as we hear faith comes by hearing the word of god and it's important for us to overcome that doubt if we do not have faith if the faith is low then then the doubt will take over that's that's the point doubt cripples but does not incapacitate faith so if we are being fed the word of god and if you are feeding yourself on a daily basis then you can overcome that doubt remember zacharias who was made dumb because he didn't believe and actually if you read that scripture a few verses before he was praying for a child and then when the angel came he said how can that be come on and the word of god says when you pray you believe that you receive and you have what you say that should be our attitude you know sometimes the lord does the miracle and you are not believing it the angel is telling him and and he had to be <laughs> he had to be just shut down because the miracle was going to happen anyway you know that is in luke 113 and luke 118 because the angel comes to him saying do not be afraid for your prayer is heard that means he prayed and then in luke 118 he says how shall i know this for i am an old man and my wife is well advanced in years you know within within a short period of time how we forget uh what we have prayed for and the lord has answered that and i'll wrap it up with one last verse you know isaiah 40 29 through 31 he gives power to the weak do you feel weak today 
you know god is a god who gives power to the weak and to those who have no might he increases strength how many need increased strength i i need more strength i need more strength he is the one to those who have no might he increases strength even the youth shall faint and be weary and the young man shall utterly fall but those who wait upon the lord will renew their strength we saw that i think pastor jemima finished the sermon even in the prophetic word and we had not talked what we are going to share we are in the same home but we are not there is no time to talk we need to we need to take a vacation but those who wait upon the lord shall renew their strength we need strength we need to wait upon i looked up the word wait you know what it means to bind together and then in bracket it says perhaps by twisting to bind together perhaps by twisting very interesting daniel i i i learned this as i was preparing so of course waiting upon the lord is spending time in his presence of course having a conversation with him praying but the meaning is to bind together with god perhaps by twisting basically it's like the true wine and the branches really connected with god bind together with god abiding with him that is where we will get the strength spending time in the presence of the lord we all need to do more of it and then they shall mount up with wings like eagle they'll run and not be weary they'll walk and not faint you know some of you even watching over the internet are feeling weary and i am gaining strength as i am speaking um it took a while to uh, recover i know sam is nodding as well uh, it has been a, a long battle in operations for the ministry uh, for redigging but we need to wait upon the lord bind with the lord it's like like the threefold cord concept just be together with the lord that's where we can receive that renewed strength and it is needed at this moment for our families for our individual lives you know and and you will see even in the workplace many of the companies are secular and you might face persecution i'm sure some of you will raise your hand if i'll ask but this is the time to just continue to pursue god think about what is happening in other nations i think but if we do not fight back then the persecution is going to grow and that's why fighting back is so important let's let's pray let's all stand up thank you lord thank you master hmm. heavenly father we are thankful for this wonderful morning thank you lord for the whole armor of god even as we begin today to meditate on ephesians 6 and 10 onwards give us grace to learn give us grace to understand give us grace to implement give us grace to be warriors in the kingdom have that soldier mentality help each one here lord strengthen each one to be warriors in the kingdom strengthen each one to be soldiers in your army lord and you will take care of our families even as we fight this spiritual warfare you will take care of our families you will take care of our communities you will take care of our state and even the nation lord thank you for teaching us how to fight this battle thank you lord some of you are watching and are wondering what is this warfare about and who is this lord who is a man of war the name of this god is the lord jesus christ and i really i know the lord is tugging some of you who are watching online to find out about this creator god if you would like to pray with me you can be a child in the kingdom of god 
So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I do not know this God who is a man of war. And I would like to know this God so that I can join this army of God to fight this battle. I receive the Lord Jesus Christ as my personal savior. If you prayed that prayer, then you are a new creation. Find a Bible believing church and a Bible preaching church and be part of that church. It's important to be in a community of believers. If you are in the Bay Area, you're welcome to join us at the Blessing Church. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we are thankful for this wonderful morning, Lord. Thank you for this gathering today. Thank you for the service today with the dedication for Cadmiel. We bless everyone who is gathered here in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we know that we have warriors right in this room. And I pray that they will receive a mighty anointing, a double portion, a cup runneth over anointing, Lord, to fight for our nation, to fight for our families, Lord. Strengthen each one. Let each one be strong in you and in the power of your might. Let the power of God be in their lives. Anoint each one today, Lord, to be warriors for our families, for our individual lives, and for our nation. Thank you, Master. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Master. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of the Father and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with each one of you now and forevermore. Amen.